Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the Rucker Voyager Gore-Tex jacket. Now this is one of four new Rucker textile jackets for 2023 and this is the first of those jackets that I've got my hands on for review. It's the Voyage R, it's got a top line laminated Gore-Tex outer shell, three layer one, and it costs a penny under 1100 quid. It's a serious jacket, I've done around 500 road miles while wearing this one, so I can run through the essential info and also let you know how I got on with it out on the road. It's made from a laminated Cordura outer shell with even tougher 1500 denier Cordura at the shoulders and elbows plus stretch inserts inside the elbows. There's even more stretch that comes from accordion panels on the rear, which give a lot of extra flexibility. Because the Gore-Tex membrane on this jacket is laminated to the inside of the outer shell, the water protection is more immediate than it would be in a jacket which has a membrane as a separate layer on the inside. That means this jacket is ideally suited to, to riders who know they're going to be riding in the rain a lot. The jacket doesn't get as wet and it also dries out quicker, making it more comfortable for riding day after day. This jacket fastens with a sealed zip up the front that does up over the top of a gutted storm flap and then there's this external storm flap that folds over and fastens with a popper at the base. Then there's a velcro neck closure at the top. Like most Rucker jackets I've tried, this runs a high neck with a neoprene trim around the top to give a good seal against rain and wind. If that doesn't suit you, then you can leave the top open and fold the velcro tab back on itself which stops it attaching itself to your lid lining. I don't get on terribly well with high necks, so I rode with this jacket open like that and it was absolutely fine. If you want even more rain protection, there's a waterproof hood rolled up in the collar. If you unfurl that, you can wear it under your lid for the ultimate rain barrier. The cuffs on this jacket are great for wet weather riding. You put your gloves over this inner section here and then zip the outer section over the top of your glove for the best rain protection. Some riders don't like this cuff, saying it's a bit fiddly and time consuming, but for me, it's hardly any slower than putting on a one layer cuff and it is better at keeping out rain, so I'm always happy when a jacket has that sort of setup. There's good air ventilation on this jacket as well. You get an opening at each collarbone, you get two on the back, and then one at each hip. Because the waterproof membrane is effectively a part of the outer shell, when you open the vents, there's a very clear route for air to flow inside. At the hip and back vents, there's a light mesh that maintains the jacket's structure when those vents are open, but at the shoulder, it's as direct as any vent on any jacket I've ever seen. It comes straight through to the inside without even a mesh layer in the way. Airflow on this jacket was very good. I wore it on three bikes, a Yamaha FZ1 Phaser and two Suzuki's, a GSX S1000 GT and a V-Strom 800 DE. And even behind screens on those bikes, air could reach those vents and I got a good flow of air inside. Now this might win me today's State in the Bleeding Obvious Award, but you need to shut those vents when it's raining because if air can get through there, then rain definitely will as well. In terms of fit adjustment, there are poppers above each elbow to pinch the jacket in at the sleeves. You get Velcro tabs at the waist and also some zipped pleats at the waist. It's best not to rely on those pleats to give you extra room all the time though. If you've got those open, then you've got the vents open and that means that section isn't waterproof. Now finally with the exterior, pockets, there are just two, which are both at the waist. There's no lower back pocket on this jacket. Rucker do a really good job with pockets in general, and there's something on this one that's really helpful for a key numpty like me. There's a strap with a plastic loop on the end, which comes in this right-hand pocket. If you clip your house keys on that, then even if you don't do your pocket up afterwards, your keys won't fall out and be lost forever. I'm terrible for leaving pockets undone, and that gives me real peace of mind that I'll still be able to get in the house when I get home. The two pockets are marked as water resistant, but they use the same zips as the vents. So I'd say if you make sure they're properly closed, then no rain's gonna get inside. I had no problems with the contents of the pockets getting wet while I wore this jacket, and I did have a couple of stints of really heavy rain in my time wearing this. Right, let's move to the inside of the jacket. There's no thermal liner with this one. Rucker treat warmth liners as separate items now, and even if a Rucker jacket does come with one, then it's not something that connects inside. It's a second layer that you wear underneath. If you want to stick with Rucker for your extra layers, they do have a couple of mid-layer options for warmth. As we record this, there's an Aldrich jacket that's £140 or a warmer Down X 2.0 jacket for £210. You don't have to put Rucker stuff in there though. There are plenty of ways of putting warm layers underneath this jacket from clothing that you've probably already got knocking around if that's what you prefer. Internal pockets are a bit lacking. You can use two that come in the inner shell, but they're actually designed to house optional chest armour. So if you want chest armour, then you lose your internal pockets. If you don't want the chest armour, then, well, happy days, you're all right. In that layer also, we can get to the armour. The impact protection in this jacket is serious stuff, as you get with most Rucker jackets now. 
It's D3O armor that meets the higher level two of the CE impact protection standard. It's meaty stuff, but it's well ventilated for airflow and the coverage is considerably more than you get with a regular armor insert. I'd say the shoulder inserts for these jackets are almost as big as the back protector inserts you get in some other jackets. You get protection for shoulders, elbows and back, and the back protector is massive. It's as big as many of the standalone back protectors that you wear with straps, and it's very reassuring to have that sort of protection in place. Chest protection, as I said, that's an optional extra. A pair of inserts that meet the basic level one of the CE standard cost £44.99 as we record this. Overall, Rucker were quite late to get on board with the latest CE testing standard, but personally I'm glad to see they've done that now. The label for this jacket shows the Voyage Army it's the middle of three levels in the CE standard, which is AA. To stop the jacket riding up and leaving a gap at the waist, you've got two options. There's a crotch strap that goes from the back of the jacket, you run it between your legs and then it connects to a plastic loop on the front at the waist, or there's a long zip that you can use to attach the jacket to Rucker textile trousers. There are matching Voyage R trousers available that have the same style and construction as the jacket and they cost from £849.98 as we record this. If you add that to the jacket's list price, which is £10.99.99 at the moment, then you're looking at 50 quid shy of two grand for the combination. It will go over that mark if you need the biggest sizes though, as there's a 10% premium for 5XL and above in the jacket and for 6XL and above in the trousers. On the subject of sizes, the Voyage R comes in everything from extra small up to 7XL. That ranges from a 36 inch to a 56 inch chest. Now I normally wear a 40 inch chest in jackets, but I went down to a 38 for this, which is a small, and that gave me a better fit. I often find Rucker jackets come up a bit big. So if you're on the cusp of two sizes, personally, I'd start with the smaller of the two when you're trying them on. Okay, so let's sum up. There's no mistaking that this is a serious jacket that's aimed at people who are serious about their kit. It is a high price tag, yes, but it's pretty much par for the course now for a three layer laminated Gore-Tex jacket. I wore this one through some pretty stinky weather and it just shrugged it off completely. It was dry and ready to go again the next morning. The comfort was good for me. The stretch panels at the rear gave good flexibility and the vents flowed air well when I was on the move. The armor as well, that's probably the best available in any type of jacket unless you go for an airbag and the build quality is absolutely first class. If you've got the budget, then I really don't think you'll be disappointed with this jacket. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Rucker Voyager Gore-Tex jacket, but if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.